All right, so let's get the game number one started, people. Uh, we are going to start with last hits and denies. Gives us a better indication how the leaning phase is going. We have a five-man smoke from both of the teams. Yes. And they this are rushing towards the river just to place their wards down. Uh, there is a ward on uh, Marcy. Let's see where the Radiant team uh, do want to place their ward. The smoke is going to break, though. The smoke does break, so the ward has not been placed. Uh, they were able to locate what uh, Luna is the hero who broke the smoke, actually, uh, from the Dire team. So, yep, uh, the ward was not placed, but they are eventually going ahead and placing the ward. And, well, uh, yep, uh, they know that there is... Uh, hey, who knows uh, that there is vision set up here. And an immediate D ward, 100 gold going into the pocket of... Uh, Magnus, so uh, that's something they'll be very happy with. Well, the 100 gold did go to um, Omni Knight since it is him who plays the sentry. Right on, so similar thing which has been done by the Radiant team as well. And 100 gold goes into the pocket of Marcy. So an equal trade at the starting let's see who exactly is able to get this rune because i think if there is any fight it is going to happen uh near this rune. enchantress is lurking around in the area um yep so it is going to be two wanted runes for uh, both of these teams at the starting of game number one no first blood has been spilled as yet and we are going to move into the lane phase directly uh well uh Timbersaw taking a lot of damage did go ahead and level up whirling death already uh, but it is going to be the bat rider who comes to the rescue of his timber saw who did take a lot of damage and it does have to go ahead and ship out a healing salve so that he can well actually lane against this luna so um in terms of the laning phase it's a luna and an omni knight going up against timber saw and bat rider uh i think luna is going to have a pretty free farm here and uh, there is done uh, that the damage which would be outputted by a uh, bat rider uh, is going to be nullified by Omni Knight altogether because he does have a dispel uh, which uh, comes with Ripple and Luna is taking a lot of damage. In fact, Luna is going to go down for sure. Batrider is already on the case. One more hit required and first blood goes into the hands of uh, Batrider. There is a lot of harassment which is coming out uh, on the Omni Knight as well. And they start off with two kills in the top area of the map where Timbersaw was already low on HP. Uh, but with the experience and gold he he would have got in that engagement, he would be very happy with. So, a uh, nice bit of start coming out for our uh, uh, V1 Gaming. Uh, so, I don't think that's that's really bad for them. Right, in the mid lane, we are going to look at an Invoker going up against Earth Spirit. In terms of the last hits, as we're seeing, it's pretty much E1 at the moment. So, these two should have a pretty decent time uh, in terms of uh, the trade going on uh, for the last hits. And in the bottom area of the map, we are going to look at a Shadow Fiend plus a Marcy going up against Enchantress and Magnus. Um, Shadow Fiend should have a pretty nice time in this laning phase. There is not much they would be able to do against Shadow, Fan, uh, against Shadow Fiend because once he has a couple of more levels, his damage output is going to drastically increase um, when it comes to the lane altogether. Now there is a dispose which would be attempted, a couple of raises which would be coming out and they should be able to get a kill onto the Enchantress and there is absolutely nothing saving. So as we were talking about the lane, uh, aggressive moves being made uh, by V1 at the moment and they are definitely on a high at the moment. Yesterday they did end up getting a, a win over Passion UA which was the first win for them in this tournament and um, well moving into this game number one, things look pretty decent for them in the start itself. Eventually, I think Luna should go ahead and um, out-carry uh, the Shadow Fiend. But uh, in case if Shadow Fiend is able to get to a good start and uh, build up a decent enough advantage, I think, yeah, Shadow Fiend himself would be doing a lot of damage when it comes to team fights. Now, uh, there is a lot of aggression against Shadow Fiend and a lot of trouble. And they are going to get another two kills in the bottom area of the map. And both the kills, well, one goes for the Shadow Fiend, one into the hands of Marcy. And things looking real bad for Hei Wu in the start of this game number one when we're already looking at just the three minute mark and five deaths already on their heroes. So it is only the Earth Spirit which has not gone down as yet but the rest of the heroes have already taken a tumble uh, for the side of Hei Wu. Uh, Timbersaw is not doing too well in terms of the last hits while we're looking at Luna at 16 when Timbersaw is sitting 
at 13, but uh, not too much differentiating uh, these two heroes at the moment. Uh, but yeah, yeah, V1 would be really happy with the start that they have got in this early stages. Right, surprising enough, there have been no denies on the Shadow Fiend. He has, what, 23 last hits? Uh, but no denies for himself. He's already, he does already have a level advantage over both of the heroes. In fact, it's double the uh, levels uh, against the Enchantress. Level 4 on Shadow Fiend, level 2 on Enchantress. Uh, that's not good signs uh, for Hei Wu. Uh, if you're looking at this bottom area of the map, there would be a nice pull, which would be coming out from Marcy. Uh, but, well, the question is, are they able to... In the meantime, there is a kill happening in the mid lane wherein they are able to bring down the Earth Spirit. But yeah, uh, so six kills to zero for the side of V1 in the starting phases of the game. And we are we have not even touched the five minute mark as yet. So a nice bit of aggression coming out from the Radiant team wherein they are able to get a lot of kills for themselves. So it's just a, that lot of extra gold going into their pockets, right? So which does make a lot of difference when it comes to uh, the early stages of the game. Right, he he has what 21 stacks of necromancy, so that's a additional 21 damage. He's working with already has only a couple of points in it as yet. Presence of the Dark Lord. Uh, in the meantime, it is Luna who does go down the top area of the map, and uh, it is going to be well. Omni Knight who went down, so it is a three-man rotation which has been made just the two supports and Timbersaw cleaning off three kills in the top area of the map, and them losing uh, and them not losing any heroes. So. It is what nine kills uh, for V1 uh, when compared to zero kills on Hebu. So yeah, this start is something that they would not have anticipated by any means. In fact, I did not anticipate this uh, this kind of an early game coming out from V1, and they have been uh, technically rocking it as yet. Right. So uh, in terms of the farm, it's. Um, well, let's go ahead and change to net worth since we are already at the six minute mark now. And we are going to see another move being made on the Earth Spirit who is not being allowed to get his level six. And is surrounded by three heroes from the side of V1. And now it is the Omni Knight who is in a lot of trouble. The Firefly is still running for uh, the Batrider and they should be able to get the skill. And I don't think there is anything which is going to make this Omni Knight survive this attempt coming out from V1. So things going from bad to worse. For the side of Hebu, and in case if the things continue this uh, this way, uh, I think this game might actually end in the, what the 20-25 minute mark. So uh, they really will have to pull up their socks on the side of Hebu, come up with a better strategy, because all across the map their heroes are suffering. Uh, well, as we are looking at it, uh, no, I'm not going to play Dota at the moment, um, but thanks for the invite right Batrider is a hero who could be in a bit of trouble here has already taken his place on the high ground wherein he was able to well Earth Spirit was able to get a vision on him but four man rotation for his support uh, Batrider uh, but at least they were able to get one kill for themselves and the seven minute wisdom rune is going to go into the hands of uh, um, it goes into the hands of Timbersaw of all the heroes right so um, no dude Right. Now it's going to be the Earth Spirit who is going to be in a lot of trouble. One more hit required from the Shadow Fiend, but they don't have enough gas in the tank. Well, a nice bit of a uh, nice uh, well tornado coming out from Invoker, catching on. But the Earth Spirit is still surviving. They have already lost their Omni Knight, uh, but it is going to be Enchantress whom they lose, and the Earth Spirit eventually goes down to the Bat Rider. And in the bottom area of the map, let's see if they want to give a chase onto this Magnus, who is still level 5, mind you. So does not have RP available, will have a skewer available in case if he wants to commit or tries to escape. And in the meantime, they did lose their Luna in the top area of the map while this goose chase is happening around the Magnus. Uh, did go into the Rosh pit. The tornado went in the wrong direction in Goker. Well, they... <laughs> The tornado could have been in a different direction altogether and uh, they would have had the kill onto the Magnus as well. Not to be though, but still it is 15 kills for the side of V1 compared to one kill for um, Hebu currently, who are currently suffering on this map. Four heroes, uh, including the bad support Batrider, uh, has a higher net worth than any hero 
on the side of Hevu currently. So yeah, things not looking too great. And in the meantime, they were able to get another kill onto the Luna. My goodness. Uh, yeah, this is just a farm fest. Uh, uh, for the side of uh, V1 now, the rolling boulder did not connect. A uh, level 6 onto the Bat Rider currently is working with uh, well. He's, he's just chasing after three heroes. How is it making sense? This is not logical, people. And uh, just the aggression coming out from V1 at the moment is just too much for the side of uh, Haver to handle. And I would not be surprised if they just call it GG near the 12-minute mark by the looks of it. 18, la uh, 18 kills uh, for the side of V1 when compared to just one on the side of Heiwu, which is which was the bat rider who is already higher than any other hero on the side of Heiwu, uh, net worth on Heiwu. So, yep, um, I am not exactly sure if there is a road to recovery after this kind of a start in a game. I really did not expect this to happen uh, for uh, Heiwu. Uh, in the starting of the day, but we one have definitely shown up uh, for this game and are actually making the side of uh, uh, the well, hey, who are just looking like uh, you know, pop stars at the moment, right? So, another kill onto the enchantress kills is happening all over the map, and uh, the entire radiant side of the map is empty. And all the 10 heroes are playing in the bottom area, uh, well, in the dire side. And there is just no respite, right? There is level 6 on the Earth Spirit, but he does not have any friends to play with currently. Uh, and will have to back out from that engagement altogether. Uh, Magnus does have a level 7, so RP is available in case if they get the opportunity. Uh, but the question remains, is he able to get an opportunity to get something done in this game number 1? wherein uh, the team just looks in shamble at the moment people uh, and they will have to come up with uh, a big team fight not exactly sure if they're going to get it uh, because this, they're just so far behind on any of on all of their heroes invoker is uh, well is in the vision correctly there would be an rp committed on the shadow fiend but uh, dude you don't have damage rhythm of souls would be committed by shadow fiend and it is going to be the madness who is going to fall first in the engagement uh, there is a nice tornado coming out from Invoker, catching out two heroes and then Marcy cleaning the house. Um, and uh, this is... Uh, I'm just going to block this guy. Sorry, people. Uh, anyways, the GG has been called 10 minutes game, people. Yep, I was kind of expecting that to happen, maybe. I, I, I did say 12 minutes, uh, but uh, 23, to, uh, 23 kill score come, uh, to 1. Uh, for uh, V1 and they finish out the game in 11 minutes. I think this is the fastest game I have ever casted. Uh, so yeah, things not technically going well um, for Hevu in this game number one and would be interesting to see what strategy are they able to come up with in game number two. So yeah, thank you so much for watching game number one people. Stay tuned in for game two. Hopefully it's not uh, a stomp like we have seen in game number one. Uh, but would be really interesting if Hevu are able to make a comeback in game number two.